Good Sunday night, everyone. Uh, this is Pressing Issues for July 19th, 2020. I am Rob Whiteside, filling in for Jason Diffendahl, who is returning from on assignment, let's say, from, uh, from Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida. Uh, very excited to be here with you guys tonight, uh, fresh off the parks, ready to talk about tonight uh, the opening of Epcot and the studios this week, along with some, uh, some surprising closures that came up recently. So, uh, definitely follow along with us in the chat, ask your questions. We're very excited that you're here. And uh, also here with us uh, tonight uh, is uh, my new good friend, Axel. Are we good friends now? We, we are definitely good friends. I mean, come on, look at this. Jason is on a plane and this show is already way better than last week. So <laughs> this can go wrong. This can go wrong. We're, we're, we're right where we want to be. Nice. And making her, uh, her uh, triumphant return from last week, Miss Allison, how are you tonight? I'm doing very well. I'm excited to uh, be back and talk about Epcot. Yeah, last week you got to have my name above you. That was pretty exciting. I got to be on the show without being on the show. That was fun. That's right. You were with us in spirit. Uh, well, and and physically at the California Grill eating some great food. So, um, so tonight we're going to talk again about Epcot and, uh, and the studios opening up. Um, I had the chance to be down there for the opening of Magic Kingdom and also Animal Kingdom, and I know that they talked about that last week on Pressing Issues. And so we definitely don't want to uh, duplicate too much from what happened last week, but I think it is still important to stress how, um, how the great links that the Disney company is taking uh, in the parks to keep us safe. Um, you know, I think there were a lot of comparisons last week to how is Universal doing it versus how are they doing it uh, at Walt Disney World. I think they're doing an amazing job. Um, I think that there are still a lot of people who go, what are, are you, you're crazy. Why are you going to a theme park in the middle of a pandemic? And honestly, just to echo what they said last week, I feel I feel very safe being inside that Disney bubble and, uh, you, know, it, you know, and still following the, uh, you know, the guidelines, absolutely. I mean, I'm not just walking around without a mask on and, you know, high-fiving people and licking handrails. But, um, you know, I mean, they, they've been doing a great job. I, you know, before we move on to the individual parks, is there anything else, uh, Axel, that you would say about the way that they've been uh, cleaning and taking care of us there? No, the, the only thing I wanted to add, and if, if somebody who's in this chat and saw the live Tom did yesterday from our little cabin party at Fort Wilderness, I mean, we have no secrets. There was a life. Everybody could see it. Um, somebody in the chat wanted s'mores. So guess who was the lucky one who could get s'mores? That was me. So I went into Walmart and I had a, a panic attack and I had to leave. We went getting all that stuff at Target uh, because I really felt unsafe. And that was really, I, I was so bad. It was so... It felt claustrophobic to a certain point. I said, like, this is too much. I need to go. And at no point had I had this experience at any of the Disney parks or, for that matter, Universal parks. So they're definitely doing a good job because I'm still concerned of the way, about the, the, the way that things go here. Um, it's, it's not uh, rainbows and sunshine. Far from that. But I do feel safe in that disney bubble and it does give me more space then let's say go to walmart absolutely yeah i had the same experience just like having to go get gas uh, at a at a local 7-eleven um and you know and nothing against 7-eleven it's just going outside the bubble is just not the same and as a matter of fact uh you know when i came home my family was like wearing masks trying to keep away from me because i was in florida and florida's awful and i don't disagree florida has these huge numbers and if you're watching the news it's very scary but when you're inside that disney bubble you do feel like you are you are as safe as you can possibly be having left your home. Um, and so when I go into other places, even here in North Carolina where I live, people are, are pulling the mask down over, ne over their noses and thinking that's okay uh, or having it down like the mask beard uh, that they do. And so I just – and I never saw any of that at any place in the Magic Kingdom, at any place, at any of the parks. Never did a cast member not have full – uh, full mask on and you know in addition to that a lot of them were wearing uh, the face shields and Allison I don't know like I mean are you the same as us as, as far as like you feel safer at Disney than at the grocery store I not only do I feel safer but I believe I am safer because they're enforcing all of the 
the mask rules. I went to Magic Kingdom today and I did see cast members informing guests very politely. Hey there, friend, why don't we go ahead and put that over our, our nose? Thank you so much for understanding. So I did see a little bit of that today. I didn't necessarily see that too much when I went to Epcot or Magic Kingdom the first time. Magic Kingdom, the first time I went, I, I saw nobody. I saw nobody with the nose thing happening, maybe like one person. Um, but yeah, I, I not only do I feel safer, but I am safer because of all of the social distancing and because they're enforcing the mask and because there's so much hand sanitizer. Yeah. And I, I mean, and I literally saw somebody at animal kingdom wiping down a tree, no lie. They were wiping down a tree. Um, and so anything that is in touch zone, I think is, is, is a, um, you know, as a place that they're cleaning. And I think another thing they talked about last week is that, you know, before the parks had closed, we didn't think a lot about all of the safety measures of cleaning things. And I think that they have just done an amazing job taking it to the next level of cleaning things. I've told a story before about literally seeing a child dragging their tongue across the, uh, the test track handrail and us just being like, what just happened? Like how <laughs> many germs did they just get? There are so many things that they're doing above and beyond where they were before uh, that it just feels a lot safer. But uh, one of the people in the chat said something about, well, Walt Disney World is open open air, and it is, but like even at the gas station standing at the pump, I'm worried about touching the pump. I'm worried about touching the screen. I'm worried that the person on the other side has decided that, oh, I don't need a mask uh, because I'm not going in the store, even though that they're you know across from each other. So there are a lot of things that even though they don't have to do it, I think that they've, you know, they want us to be safe because they do not want those reports out there that says, that COVID is spreading at the Walt Disney World Resort. Um, so to move on to the, the topic of the day is that we were talking about Epcot and Hollywood Studios opening. And it's very interesting, this staggered method where they opened up the Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom on July 11th, and then they opened uh, Epcot and the studios on July 15th. So. We were there opening day uh, for uh, Epcot. We were at Epcot because I know that uh, Axel wanted to try all the cake pops himself. Um, <laughs> and I think and I think that he did. Um, but, you know, it was really neat for me when I was going in there because I, I got to have a first day at Magic Kingdom. And then I got to have another first day at Epcot because they were they were straddled like that. So I was at park number one that opened and then the park number two that opened. So. That was pretty special to me. And then coming in, the cast members, and it's probably a lot of the stuff we talked about last week. The cast members were so excited. They were there underneath Spaceship Earth, the janitorial staff, the just the, the management, everybody waving as you were coming in. Um, you know, that was really neat and really fun and really special. And then talking to the cast members and having so many of them say, thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. Um, and it just felt really good being there. And I, I didn't feel bad until getting back outside the bubble when people telling me how wrong I was to have gone. So I, I just, I had a great time going in there. One of the other things that I got to see is, uh, a lot of closing, I mean, uh, closing of the ride to clean them. We were on the land boat ride, the uh, living with the land, and we came up to the, uh, back to load unload. And before we could get unloaded, there were people in there spraying down the uh, the cars and wiping them down, which again, I think we talked about last week on pressing issues is something that Universal hasn't been doing, or at least we haven't been seeing them do. And we saw it happen time and time again. They, they shut down uh, the Tomorrowland Speedway cars and sprayed them down. They shut them down, turned them off, sprayed them, wiped them down, turned them back on again. And you just really felt like you were being taken care of. There is still that issue that they don't require you uh, like spray, put hand sanitizer in your hand when you get on attraction, but they still have more hand sanitizer stations all over the park than they, than they do uh, at other places. And again, I felt really safe and I, I, I was hand sanitizing like crazy. I can't imagine how many gallons of hand sanitizer I am personally responsible for consuming uh, on my hands uh, since this has all started. But the big news about Epcot opening is that they did a taste of uh, food and wine. And so, uh, you know, we were there covering that. And Axel, I think you probably sampled a lot more of the food than I did. What What did you think about the presentation of uh, A Taste of Food and Wine? Um, I mean, I think we, I was able to do, to do half. We started at um, Show Plaza, which is, for me, still a weird thing. It's still something that I try to figure out what they try to do. On, on the on one hand, it's inside. There's air conditioning. 
it's July, so yes. On the other hand, there's a global pandemic and you're inside, no. Um, so, so that's the part where, where it starts. It's like, okay, it's, it's a great thing because there's air conditioning, there's tables inside, you can sit. Um, something that we did post uh, on, on, on uh, Twitter or any social media is when we left um, with other like real, I'm going to call them real restaurants and besides the boots. With, with restaurants, as soon as you get up, there's somebody there to clean your table, clean your chair. I mean, if it's restaurants, I've done a few now, they're doing an amazing job. At the show Plaza Food and Wine, they did not clean the tables um, or they did not clean them enough or uh, fast enough. Uh, so that was one of my, my worries. Um, but the food itself, uh, I think they, especially because inside the show Plaza, there's two of my favorites. There's the mac and cheese, which I think all four were winners. Uh, with a maximum price of five fifty, uh, is is decent, and I know for some people, I'm, I'm looking, trying to look in the chat um, to see if somebody says five fifty for a mac and cheese. Are you crazy? Um, but for <laughs> food and wine prices, that's that's very reasonable. That's really good. And then the other one uh, is champagne and desserts. Where, as Rob said, I wanted to try those three uh, cake pops. Now they're they're all the same cake pop. Like, do do not get too excited they're exactly the same but Boo. they dip them in chocolate and then there's one going in twix there's one going in uh i think it's m m's and the other one is just an extra layer of chocolate and then they what is it they they freeze them uh, what would you what they call them oh liquid like, nitrogen uh, they nitro yeah. liquid nitrogen that's the one um so that's really good and and those are four dollars now every snack that I've tried at, at Disney, like you have to look hard to find something that's reasonable in size for four bucks. And that's something that is very reasonable in size. You can easily share that uh, in an afternoon and try that out for four bucks. I think that was that was pretty, pretty nice. Did you, um, get, did you get a, a try of them? Did you even try them, those chocolate pops or the mac and cheese? <sighs> Can I be honest? I was a little. Uh, it was a little weird that we were passing around uh, the cake pops and saying, "Here, you want a bite? Here, get a hit off of this." No, what <laughs> pandemic? I don't know if there's a pandemic. Um, no, I kind of kept my tastings to the things that I could eat with a fork. Um, so I did not, unfortunately, try that. I know I should have. I should have manned up and been we in were, there. We were able to to just use a fork for those cake pops as well. So. Okay. We just we just acted so you wouldn't be you wouldn't. You didn't want me to have any. Them for it. That's correct. That's, yeah, that's, that's it. it. They didn't want you to have I any. So more than them. I get it. Um, you know, it, it is really interesting going around with everybody and and you know doing the reviews. Everybody's taking pictures of the food and uh, and and tasting it and getting opinions and reporting back what's going to happen so that we can get uh, the information to you guys as fast as possible to let you know what's good and what's bad and what not to waste your time or your money on. Um, but it was interesting for this festival that a lot of the food was leftover menu items they're not left over the food's not left over but the menu choices <laughs> well not that i know of but the menu choices were left over from the flower and garden festival and so that on top of the fact that they were only selling flower and garden merch because there isn't merch at this time that says mm -hmm. a taste of food and wine it feels like they called this the wrong thing like i don't know why they wouldn't have just called it like flower and garden take two because there was more flower and garden about it than there was uh, then there was food and wine about it. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you guys experienced that and, uh, and, you know, you felt the same way about it, but that's the thing to me. That's just like, I have all this, you know, I bought a lot of merch cause that's the thing that I do. I buy a lot of merch and all of it says Epcot flower and garden festival. Now, granted, I didn't get a chance to buy it, uh, in the spring since it was like two weeks after it opened before the whole park shut down. But, you know, it was neat to be able to get my hands on that. The Spike the Bee Sipper, uh, that was available still, which I thought was pretty cool. So I got one of those and also, um, you know, trying some of the other the other dishes that were still available because they were Flower and Garden. Um, Allison, did you say you did go to Epcot? 
Yeah, so I, I went to Epcot on the 15th, so the first day. I didn't okay. get there early in the morning because kind of seeing how people that are, you know, there's a lot of people that get there first thing in the morning and it gets a little crowded, a little congested. So we decided to wait a little bit. And it was a really good decision because once we get into future old, you show up like an hour or two later, there's nobody there. Everybody's started to, to make their mind the back. So yes, I went to Epcot, but I did not choose to visit the food booths. I wanted to go have a nice kind of sit down meal. And I went to the beer garden in, in Germany. And I wanted to kind of see what the difference was between how it used to be with the buffet and how it is now and it's a family style so i don't know if you want me to go into that or route going to restaurants sure. later okay um yeah so with with the uh, with the beer garden so you used to have to sit with a whole bunch of people at the same table well obviously we're not doing that anymore and they're separating all of the tables and one party per table and they still have the uh the band and they play every like 45 minutes or so, which is very nice. They they don't have a dance floor anymore, and they serve everything family style. So they bring out uh, salads, then they bring out the like a big plate of entree, and then they bring out like a dessert plate. And it was very very nice. All of the wait staff were reminding us, saying, "Hey, if you're going to be visiting the the restroom, put your mask back on while you're traveling," which is really really cool. Uh, and the food was delicious. I, I enjoy eating there now that I don't have to sit next to people that I don't know. You know, it was interesting with the tables that, like, sometimes it seemed like they did that correctly. That the table to your you know to your left and and behind you were open, and sometimes it looked like they didn't. I mean, there, we were in um, Hollywood Studios at um, the uh, primetime fifties, and there was a table mm -hmm. right behind us that was still seated and there was and we were in a small room and we were the only two together so i do think they did a good job of that in most cases but i think in some cases it seems like either to keep capacity they had to switch things around um not really sure about that but we did eat at uh, via napoli uh when we were there and uh it was interesting that we asked for uh crushed red pepper and um and parmesan and they brought it out and they would not leave it they would put it wherever you wanted to and then they took it away mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, like a lot of restaurants now, you ask for ketchup, they give you a little cup of it. I would have thought they would have done that. So it was interesting that they, um, sent somebody around. Did you, have you eaten any of the sit down restaurants, Axel, at Epcot? Uh, Since you've Epcot, been back? the yeah. Garden Grill. I've, How was I've that? done like a sit down by now in every park and every hotel since it reopened. So I'm, I'm, I'm not a good example. Definitely not. Uh, don't do it. Kids don't do it. I'll be safe. <laughs> <laughs> um, the garden grill, we'll try was, this the at garden home. grill was really was really good. I mean, for the people who there's a review on on the website, so so be sure to check that out. Um, for those who don't know, the the garden grill is the restaurant and the land pavilion that just goes round and round and round, which is not one of my favorite things. I, I hate that the thing goes around, but hey, uh, we 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 manage that, um, and it's it's basically in in uh, there's there's two like floors, I you say two levels of the restaurant. There's one like two steps higher. Um, the upper level is closed and that's for the characters. So there's still characters. They just walk around on that upper level and then they come and peep over the little wall where you sit on those little boots. Um, so that's really nice. Um, I think it's, it's a nice way uh, for the characters to still interact with you. The way Disney does things is, again, I'm, I'm, I'm maybe too, too hard on them um, because I'm like, I take the pictures. So, so all the pictures in that review, I took the pictures, the pictures of the characters. And I like my characters when they come to get like a beautiful picture with them together. So I asked like, could you move up closer? And they're like, yeah, no, they can't because they're practicing social distance. And I'm like, okay. yes, but then if you have kids in your party, shouldn't they be wearing a mask? Like, I know I'm thinking way too far, but it's like you say they, they need distance, but should they wear a mask or not? What about character integrity? But that totally on the side. The food was really good. Nothing changed. It was always um like family style so so that was really nice and it was pretty calm in the restaurant 
Uh, I'm sure we're going to talk about uh, Hollywood Studios. That was even better uh, yeah. for for restaurant experience. But I mean, I I liked it. It was really nice to be able to have a sit down and not being rushed out because there's a lot of people waiting and they need to turn their tables. Uh, this is something you don't have now. I mean, we talked about it, I think, weeks ago uh, in this show when we went to Topolino. There were three tables. We were one of three tables. So there was no hurry whatsoever. They even came and offered us food uh, because they had so much in the kitchen that there, there was nobody there. And then although there's more people coming in, um, especially for the, the sit down experiences, I think with not all the restaurants being open, there are certain places that are busier than they would be during these times if everything was open. Uh, I did two days ago, I did Yuck and Yeti and it was busy. Like every other mm -hmm. table was, was taken. Um, but Tusker house is closed. Tiffins is the only other sit down you have in that park. So yeah, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be busier in those, in those restaurants that are open, but still the experience is really nice. One of if the things that we uh, caught, please to do the boots. There's nothing else in that park, dude. <laughs> you know what? That's uh, so. So Garden Grill is a great one because the, the the lower level, all the seats are basically separated already because of the way those booths are. You really kind of already have a, a good social distance going on anyway with those. So um, I think that's a neat setup, and the fact that Disney's doing the characters where they can, I think, is great. Um, but you were talking about there's really nothing else to do in that park, and one of the things that jumped out of me is on opening day of the Magic Kingdom. There was a time uh, where we did like 11 attractions in four hours, I think, or maybe yeah. it was it was two days later when we did. I think it was the two days later, but so near the opening, we were able to do a lot. At Epcot, we didn't ride anything that first day, and a lot of that was because there were so long lines. The lines were long. Now mm -hmm. I know that they're they're having to socially distance the queue. I know that there are you know that they probably are stopping to clean the vehicles, but. You know, Frozen was at like 50 minutes. The good part about that is there were there were no you know fast passes, so this is like a legit 50 minutes. Um, but Test Track was its usual length. Now we were able to get on Soar and basically almost walk on, and that was great. Same thing with um, the Living with the Land. We kind of basically walked right onto that. So there were some things that you could still walk on. Figment, um, you know, a lot of the uh, Nemo, same things that you mm -hmm. would normally get a fast pass for and feel like you don't need one. Um, but it was interesting that there were such long lines. I, I think that maybe Frozen might have been the longest line I waited in the entire time uh, that I was at Walt Disney World this trip. And, you know, I, I got to get my Elsa in. I mean, I have no choice. I have to do it. So um, the, the other thing is that, um, you know, we were, you were talking about the characters, Axel. The character cavalcades that they do in all four parks I think are super well done. When we were – and I'm going to try not to compare a lot to Universal, but when we were at Universal and they set up those, like, what look like convention center stages uh, with like mm -hmm. black, you know, black carpet on them and Spider-Man standing there just kind of twiddling his thumbs, waiting for somebody to come. And then they show up and then he does his pose and then, you know, and then he's kind of just standing there. We actually saw thing one and thing two sitting on the stage and somebody reading a story and literally nobody paying attention. Um, at least with these character cavalcades, they kind of well, come that's right daily. through. That's yeah. daily universal. <laughs> they, they always do that story. They, they just sit there and nobody listens. Like, well, I felt bad for them, uh, but the character cavalcades that they had at uh, at Epcot, one of them was uh, Anna and Elsa, and uh, Elsa, now that she's no longer queen, she had to walk, but Anna gets the ride in the carriage. Um, that was cool, and then uh, and then the princess one that came through. Now, the interesting thing to me about the princess uh, uh, character cavalcade that came through is that each princess was on her own row of the car, and then there was a, a sheet of plastic in between each of them. So yeah. they weren't wearing face masks, but they were also still being socially distanced from each other. And then they had uh, cast members on all four corners almost playing like a zone defense, trying to make sure that there was a lot of space uh, keeping you away from from the character. So I do think that is one area that I just hugely applaud Disney for in trying to keep the magic is the fact that they have the characters that they aren't necessarily wearing their masks. You can't go up and hug them, but they're keeping them safe and separate and still 
magical to me. I mean, I, do you guys disagree with that at all, Axel? You, you, did you I, did you did, were you sad you didn't well, get to hang out with the princesses? That's what I'm ask, actually asking. Well, I'm always sad if I can't hang out with the princesses. Let that be <laughs> I know, clear. I know. Um, <laughs> but I think the the only park where I see this in, in a good thing is Animal Kingdom because they use those little boats to go around. Uh, yeah, Disney neat. specifically said, we're not doing any meet and greets. We're not doing parades because it's going to cluster people together and we want to avoid that. <laughs> By doing this now, I'm not sure how they, I get the way of thinking is we're going to do every 20 minutes. People do not have to stand and wait to see them. They're going to pass by, but once they're out, once people hear the music, they're all together. And there's very few physical distance, especially weekends when, it, when it's a bit busier in the parks. Um, but even like in, in especially the area where they, where they start the little cavalcade next to Splash Mountain um, is, is a crossway when you enter Adventureland and you need to go to Splash Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain. When that cavalcade starts, they need to stop that traffic. And there's, there's quite some traffic. So you're, you're getting a lot of people together and they want to see, and there's, there's people, they're too close to each other to be good. So do I like those cavalcades? I absolutely love them. Um, is it the best idea they had? I'm not sure if they, the point they were making of no parades was to not get people all crowded up which is happening right now. So I'm not sure, I'm still, I'm still on the edge, especially Epcot during a food and wine. And then now, I mean, it's still hot. Mm -hmm. um, capacity is still very low. I'm not sure how long this will be sustainable or if it's gonna be like busier. Once that's gonna happen, I see that, especially because the, the, the pathway is just more narrow than it is at Magic Kingdom. I do see, problems and even limitations to those to those cavalcades i love them but during a global pandemic you just see everything true on on a different side yeah i i wouldn't disagree with that i do disagree in uh or not disagree but i would say counterpoint that with a parade you always would get there an hour early sometimes mm -hmm. and people would be sitting for hours and you know this is a very brief thing and they don't slow down and stop uh you know where they ask you to step to the side so i felt pretty safe during that but i totally get what you're saying that it does seem like you're asking people to stop for a moment and sort of gather uh wherever this is but also because they're so short um you know it only only takes like maybe even a minute uh, before it's you know it's all clear maybe not even that much time so you know maybe they'll change maybe they'll do it I agree with you though those those pathways are pretty narrow I think that's why they uh, lowered how many booths there are there are only 16 booths for the taste of food and wine festival uh, with four more marked as coming this fall um so it, you know and the good thing about this too and at least the first day that i was there is there were not huge lines at the food booths the food booths you could you were like one or two deep maybe uh to go get your food so i you know that was actually a really pleasant surprise especially in the july heat because who i mean they i think they usually don't have a festival in july for this purpose is that it's no. crowded usually super hot i went over to the canada pavilion and they have the uh beer and cheese soup and i just thought really why would you do that this is the last <laughs> thing that i want is hot dairy on, <laughs> on 170 it's degrees right though. but that's that's the festival and then they had i mean the the idiots who want to do a festival day one yeah. Um, <laughs> like, I mean, we we oh, did the, the flower and garden, so a lot of the stuff was already covered, um, and a lot of that stuff is is, is just coming back. Uh, there's a few additions to it. There's there's more coming. Um, I think there are gonna, there's going to be like enough. For me, there's more like this is still a an in between period where you still have this merge of flower and garden, which is a mind deaf uh, because like, it's weird it's it's you have remy you have taste of food and wine and then you see 
the orange birds popping up on mm -hmm. every piece of merchandise. So it, it's it's still weird. Um, I honestly would have preferred that they said like, we're gonna call it summer festival and just continue the same line as we did with Flower and Garden, keep the merchandise um, like an extension without the cost of all the flowers. Uh, but this is now just a weird situation where they push a fall festival in the middle of summer, which which is weird. But I'm... well, it'll be interesting to see how it morphs uh, as it goes along. I mean, will they get actual taste of food and wine by the time the fall rolls around, and will they be done with all the food, uh, flower and garden merch by then? Somebody asked in the chat, are they discounting the flower and garden merch? No, they are not. Uh, it is still full price merchandise. They are just uh, there was the uh, addition this week of uh, Disney raising the AP discount from twenty percent to thirty percent until uh, until August. So you know you are getting a little bit more of an AP discount, but there is I mean there the rest of that stuff they're paying full price for. And unfortunately, I'm the kind of guy that says, okay, I didn't get a chance to buy it before. I'm going to buy it now and I'll pay full price. Um, one of the other things about this, uh, you know, this festival is that it just, it, you know, it doesn't have the music that we always have too. And it makes perfect sense. You don't want people congregating for a, for a small concert, but that's a bit, been a big part between the, um, uh, the flower and garden festival. And then also like the eat to the beat that they do uh, for food and wine. Again, it's really hot uh, in July. I think they, you know, people don't want to sit outside and, and, and watch a concert and especially not socially distanced. So that's missing. Uh, they said they're going to mail magnets uh, to AP. So they weren't, you know, you, you didn't have to go congregate and stand in line to, to wait for a magnet. So there, there are a lot of things that still make it not quite uh, the same experience you'd have another with another festival. But something I said early on is they kind of needed this to draw people to Epcot. I mean, you've got all the stuff like Mickey and Minnie that people didn't get to ride because it opened up on March 4th. You've got Rise of the Resistance, which is still hot um, and all that stuff there. People still want to go to the Magic Kingdom. you got a ton of attractions there. And then Animal Kingdom, you know, you've got Flight of Passage Avatar and it's, you know, it's, 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 it's a fun park to be in epcot is really under construction uh it is really a park uh in progress right now uh, you know remy isn't going to be open yet we don't know when that's going to happen uh we've got the play pavilion is going to happen maybe we don't know when guardians is under construction um, the front the fountain's still not open so i think if you didn't put this festival there i think that you wouldn't really have a way to draw as many people over to these uh, to epcot at least yeah, if you look at the calendar of availability, and if anything still has any kind of availability left, it's Epcot. Yeah. Nobody wants to go there. Axel, what do Even, you think? And, and Well, it's Epcot. I feel bad for, for Epcot. Uh, there, was, uh, <laughs> there were such beautiful plans for that park. And then on our tour of the Taste of Food and Wine uh, Festival, I think we were at the America Pavilion where all of a sudden it was like, okay, you, you'll have to go check out uh, the Epcot experience because they cut um, Spaceship Earth and the mm -hmm. Cherry Tree Lane. So like, okay, I head off to, to go check that out. And Disney just, in, in, to be completely silent, don't say anything, but we're gonna cut this out, a 360 movie, which is not like this. This is not an edit you do in five minutes. Let's let's be honest. Um, but they they cut those two things out. There's no posters anymore. There's no photo up. There's still f two photo ops there. But then all of a sudden nobody talks about our um, what was the our shared story. Oh yeah, the new the new yeah spaceship earth our shared story yeah, yeah Disney made that now our shredded story they they just like, shredded Aww. it so that it's gone oh and thank you for the super chat by the way thank you yeah that I went over there too to see that because uh, you know we had talked about that it, it had come out that they weren't going to be we already knew that they weren't going to be um, updating spaceship earth yet and I'm glad they didn't because it needed to be there for capacity um, you know I think that closing that. 
would would have really kind of left us with very little left. But um, when they mentioned the the Mary Poppins thing, what really gets me about that being gone is that we're never going to know what it was. And maybe they didn't know what it was. I don't know. But it was very <laughs> generic. We didn't know. Was it a meet and greet? Was it a spinner? We heard, you know, not a dark ride. We heard it could be a character meet and greet. We weren't really sure what it was. But I agree with you. When I went over, I wanted to watch and see how they edited that out. And it's as if it never existed. I mean, it really, no. uh, you know, it really just flows through as if it never happened. Not yeah. at all. And I do agree. Like, I, I'm happy, like Spaceship Earth. The, the, the difference is, we knew that it was going to be set back. Uh, they, they would need the, the ride to be operating, but nobody knew that it was going to be shelved. Uh, I'm happy it got shelved, but that'd be clear because like, I, um, like the artwork they, they released was not like the best thing. Uh, the only thing you see is they take away two thirds of the animatronics because there's a lot of maintenance to do and then and, and put some some lights in, in that Egypt scene and that's it. Hmm. So I wasn't happy to see that. So I'm happy that it stays like this. I hope they will like do the right maintenance and, and uh, take care of the rides as long as, as it's as it's going like this. But it's like it's Disney, like in without saying too much words about it, it's like, OK, we're just going to cut it out and, and we'll see if they notice. And then if, if WDWNT tweets it, oh, we'll, we'll make a statement. Let's see if they say something. <laughs> it's that's just weird. Yeah, you know what? It's one of those things too, and we'll talk about this more in the back half of the show. Where there were some other things that were announced that uh, that are not coming back, and they just kind of sweep it under the rug a little bit and don't make any big announcement. Um, so uh, before we move on to um, to to talk about Hollywood Studios specifically, is there anything else, Allison, that you thought any more thoughts about Epcot and and how that opening went? Sure. Uh, so uh, I went to Magic Kingdom and then my second park was uh, Epcot for the opening. So we're walking around Future World empty. We could get on things very quickly. Everything was totally fine. However, uh, this was so they've recently announced uh, and you can check out our, our website for the article that Disney has officially changed the wording in their policy for mask wearing and eating and drinking. So you, there are now, you know, sandwich board signs or A-frames that say, you know, if you're eating or drinking, you know, please step to the side and then wear your mask and continue walking. So we saw a lot of people getting their food from the booths. And they're just, you know, while they're walking and, and they're drinking while they're walking. And it wasn't just a, a couple of people. It was a lot of people. And, you know, people would, like, like start shouting with their mask off. Uh, so we saw a lot of, of that. And we were a little, like, eh about it. Yeah. So we're pretty... Uh, we're pretty excited to to see that they're going to be a little bit more consistent with uh, the enforcement of the mask wearing. And if you're going to take a drink, if you're going to eat something, 100% do it. But you know that there's people that are walking around with their mask half off and they're just carrying a water bottle around and they're not doing anything with that. They're just kind of holding it so that they kind of have an excuse to not have their mask up. I mean, some people were legitimately eating and stuff like that, but there is definitely people that – that like you could tell like now they have to pull over to the side enjoy what they purchased and then continue on their way yeah and you've got the relaxation stations all over the place too right. i mean you know pizza bars close um in norway you can sit in the sit down restaurant which was great because it's air conditioned and there's you mm -hmm. know it's socially distanced and we you know we could we took some of the um some of the booth food in there and ate it there so it is very it's very easy to find a place away from everybody to eat without your mask on and we did hear that information uh as well on saturday that they were starting to enforce that but i feel better about that because that was a problem at universal uh that people mm -hmm would walk around and have drinks and i feel uncomfortable because i need to you know i'm carrying a water where you know if i'm going to drink it i kind of do this and put my mask back up so i'm not making other people feel uncomfortable i didn't see it a ton but when we were at springs one night we were walking around there was a guy who literally had his mask in his hand down here drinking a drink just walking around and i was it made me feel uncomfortable and it didn't happen a lot because I, I know we talked about like feeling that. safe in that bubble but it did not feel uh you know that that right there made me feel like 
he's he's infringing on my rights as he's not being safe and you know and i i needed to kind of step away uh over to the side for that so i'm glad to hear that they're doing that and the again those relaxation zones are the perfect place to do that because you already are socially distanced you're sitting down um you know they have more opportunities and more places for you to do that than they did before yeah it's i'm, I'm happy i'm happy they do it i think they they're only what 12 days late to do so um, especially after they announced the neck gaiters that you couldn't wear them because it wasn't safe they weren't double layered I was like well I get it and I'm willing to give up my neck gaiter but then there's so many people walking around and in all honesty the amount of money Disney makes from popcorn Mickey bars and pretzels they know that people are going to buy those and walk around. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's something that they should have done from the very first day and not after getting maybe there's a lot of every, I think every other guest who went to Epcot or any of the other parks got a survey. Did you feel safe? What did you think? Mm -hmm. And I think that there's going to be a lot of feedback with that, you know, I felt safe, except for those people who are eating and drinking and walking. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's something that Disney, again, should have known from the very first day because they know how big business their, their little food stands are and popcorn and drinks, whatever. Um, so they, they should have done that earlier. I'm happy they, they decided to do so as of now, like officially the parks were open a week uh, and they changed the policy. Uh, today, even at the Magic Kingdom, I had a, ga a cast member saying at an ice cream stand, like, um, just so you know, I'm going to give you the ice cream. You are asked to, act to eat your ice cream while being on the site, not walking and taking off your mask. So that cast member, like, kudos to her because she did her whole spiel. And if she's done that for every customer she had, that was really nice. Um, but... I mean, it's something they, they should have thought about earlier. It should have been in the spiel that plays every 10 minutes throughout the parks. Mm. Um, for me, they still should adapt that spiel, saying like, okay, and eating and drinking while standing on the side or while like off the side, anything. Uh, they should adapt that, put that in there, uh, because that's, that's an important part of feeling safe you you can do so much and you can wear your mask if, if there's a family and especially maybe people are going to visit food and wine uh, might have a few drinks and then it might be easier to forget the mask and if you're seated down me as a regular guest i can avoid that part and i can walk on the other side you could not always do that yeah. with somebody walking around yeah. You know, one, one, one of the things, though, uh, you know, and you talk about like Disney being eight to 10 days late on this policy is, to my knowledge, Universal still has not enacted this policy and they've been open since June 5th. So, you know, mm -hmm. shame on them as well for not having stepped up and done something about this earlier. And something that Nick talked about on Pressing Issues last week was how he feels like the, the Disney park goer has been a little bit more uh, closely following the rules than the universal, uh, than the universal crowd has, which I, I feel like I've seen that as well. And maybe it just could be because it's new. Um, but I think that they need that policy as much, if not more, uh, than, than Disney. So I'm glad Disney came to the table with it. Do you, you disagree? Like every, like every park. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's always been like following the rules is, is really good at Disney. It could be better at universal it goes down a step at SeaWorld and then at Fun Spot, everybody just doesn't care and doesn't wear a mask and like, uh, catch COVID here, chances are huge. <laughs> that's, exactly. that's, that's what you do. Like. Bad billboards. So, something yes. else they were talking about um, in the chat, they were talking about kids and kids wearing masks. You know, one of the things I've noticed is that there aren't a ton of kids. Uh, there aren't a ton of strollers and you know, it makes sense. It mm -hmm. makes sense that you don't want to endanger your, your kid. Uh, if you're an idiot adult, who wants to go, uh, you know, into the parks and, you know, and have fun, um, then fine, but don't drag your children into the parks if you, you know, if you're afraid of that. But again, we feel like they're doing a safe job. We feel like they're cleaning. We feel like that they're, they're, you know, making new policies cl clearly all the time. So I do think it is something where it's really people making a choice is not to take their families because uh, it can be 
hugely expensive too. I assume a lot of the people who are going now are AP who have already paid their admission in. Uh, they're either local or they're DVC, and so it's not, you know, they're not putting out a lot of cash to be able to go into what is really a muted Disney experience. But it's really interesting to look around and see that there just aren't a lot of children uh, in general. And I don't mean just babies and toddlers. I mean, you know, small children to like, you know, the preteen. I you just don't see a lot of that when I'm in or when you're in there. And there you go. I just brought that to a grinding halt. So let's move over to <laughs> let's move this over my dream to. Park. Uh, I could not say that Disney without kids is my dream park. I'm going to have a lot of bad stuff in the in the chat, but Disney without kids, it's it's even better. Like honestly, childless millennials. So anyway, yes, um, back the over to to uh, Hollywood Studios. I was really excited to do studios because I have not done Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway and I haven't been there ah. since Rise of the Resistance opened. So I was hugely what? excited to finally get a chance to ride Rise of the Resistance. Um, Wow. I was I was a little paranoid about the fact that, you know, one of the things that the when I had thought about going before was I was afraid not to get a boarding group. You know, that whole idea that you have to get there at 4 a.m., you get in, you have a technical glitch, you still can't get a boarding group. They've changed that policy where they do boarding groups and they drop them three times a day at 10, 1, and 4, which is really great. Mm -hmm. I love that. Very similar to what they're doing with Hagrid's. Um, so I got there at 9.20 thinking, like, this is going to be great. Park opens at 10. The backup at the at the um, you know uh, the uh, the toll booth in the front was was horrible. Uh, we get up the the backup to get into um, the temperature screen was backed up. Uh, I got slowed down in um, in bag check. So when I finally got in, I was afraid I wasn't going to get in before ten, and I get in by ten, and uh, I was with Jason, and I thought. Jason and I will both try to get each other, you know, boarding passes. Uh, and so I go to, to do it. I wasn't with him. He was somewhere else. I go to do it and realize he's already made one for himself, just not for me. So I have to back out and, uh, and, and remove him from my group and go back in. So he got group 20 and I grew, got group 46. Uh, so no. that was interesting, but we ended up, we were all able to go together. Um, it was really cool. I wrote it with, with Tom and, and a lot of people were like, Oh no, no, stand over here, stand over here. Um, it was amazing to me. And I think that anybody who doesn't say that rise is like top five easy attractions. I mean, it's, it's just amazing to me. Now, maybe if you've ridden it 40 times, it kind of wears off, but having been the first experience, I, I was ready to go ride it again. I wish I could have. Um, but it was one of these uh, situations with Rise where, um, like, I had never done it before. I wanted to make sure that the pre-shows were going to be there because I, I hear that that's one of the big things. I'd never looked into it to see what this attraction was. I wanted to see it for the first time on its own. And so when we did it, I know that, uh, that Tom and some of the other guys were saying that it, they liked the way that it was spaced out, that you had to stand on these circles and numbers and that it was like they wished it could be that way all the time. Uh, and then we got into one of the main rooms and they have the animatronic stormtroopers and they actually had a live like actor stormtrooper uh, hidden amongst the rest of them, which was kind of fun. Um, cool. Yeah, so it was really neat. But conversely, I'd never done Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway and that pre-show was not running. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. know if it was just then or if it's all the time, but when we got, so when we got in there for it, uh, we, you know, Tom was going, ah, oh, the pre-show is the best part of this. And we get up and you just walk right in. So we missed that. When they did cast previews, Axel, did they do the pre-show for Mickey and Minnie or did you go? They did. <sighs> they absolutely did. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the only thing that is, is, um, like I did it on, on, uh, well, last this Monday, uh, for the cast preview, the very first day that it reopened, uh, things were different. Um, I I don't know how, how I feel about boarding groups. I still think that what they did on cast preview might have been a better system where they scanned each band going in and you were only allowed to do the right ones. And it was a regular like waiting line it went up, I think, to 105 minutes, which for a ride like that is still okay. Um, I think I did about 75 minutes from going into the line and being out again, um, but it gives everybody the opportunity to do so. With boarding groups, it's, it's still a different story. But they did the pre-show, and for Mickey's Runway Railway, 
same thing. You just go in, in the line. I think I waited 20 minutes and it was with a pre-show. Now it's different than with rise because it's, I think, I think I have a picture in, in some of the articles, you'll see the picture of the, the pre-show having, I think eight or maybe 10 parties in that pre-show. Um, which is just slow, I think, to, to get everything up and running. I think they, they definitely want to do the pre-show, mm -hmm. but then decided otherwise to get more people in. Um, one of the things that um, I've seen with Animal Kingdom, uh, Dinosaur has the pre-show, has everything taped off uh, to have parties in there to watch the pre-show. And still, as of day one, they decided to just let everybody walk in. Um, I, it's different for Tower of Terror. I mean, I get that. That library is very small. You couldn't fit everybody in. So that's just like walk on through. You're done. Uh, same thing for Rock and Roller Coaster. There's no pre-show. You just walk in. Um, Muppets, like honestly, for me... It's more of a waiting area than a pre-show, although there's mm. this little video, but that's still running. I mean, there's, there's plenty of space, uh, but it's more of a waiting area to get in. Same thing, you just stand on, on those blue dots or green or red, whatever they are, um, before you go in. But it's a shame, like Min Mickey's and Minnie, uh, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is one of those rides, just like rides, where you have to see that pre-show to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, I was afraid when, when, they, when they reopened the parks and I saw how many pre-shows were eliminated, I was afraid for a rise. I was like, this is not going to be the same thing. Um, it's, it's different. We're in a pandemic. Things are different. Uh, yes, it's, it's weird to have those hand sanitizers in space. I believe that, but I mean, we can be sanitized in, in space as well. Um, the the waiting line is is the weirdest for me. Um, I think I was one of the first to get pulled out of the waiting line with the groups behind me to go outside and wait in the extended queue of Muppets to then go backstage and back into the normal queue. And then that point of being immersive, you're there and you're totally into the story. And then all of a sudden the door opens <laughs> and you're at the freaking Muppets. <laughs> you're, you're outside again. So that's- Look, a, there is a Muppets in space. Just saying, there's a whole yeah, movie. It's, it's... <laughs> Rob, you're, you're Can't muted. hear you, Rob. I think these cast member preview as guinea go. pigs to see if uh, if they were going to be uh, able to do that line and not do the boarding group because um, I, you know, I, I don't know how you would be able to do when when we went, we didn't have to do what you did. We didn't have to walk backstage. We were still in the regular rise queue because there were there were boarding groups. And so as long yeah. as everybody who is getting a ticket can get on boarding group, um, I think that then it's it's okay that they do boarding groups still just to keep it separate. And so that again, it's July. If you can avoid a line, that's great as long as everybody gets in. But I was literally this was the only day that I had at studios, the only day I had a pass, and I was I was nervous to think that going mm -hmm. through all this and not having done rise yet, having been to Batu like 20 times already on um, both coasts, but still not having done rise, this was the thing I wanted to do. And if I had been getting in there and, and didn't get a boarding group at all, that would have been devastating, um, especially with as few people are, are there now. So, you know, in that case, I probably would have wished that they had had a standby line that I could have done, but I think it did work out okay. The only thing with the boarding passes, so the system works now, you have like uh, three times a day, which is a good system. Uh, yeah. But the yeah. allocation of boarding passes is not the same every time. So there's more boarding passes in the morning. So if mm -hmm. people don't show up, they can fill that whole slot. If they have technical issues, there's a setback. So you're going to see that the first boarding groups are going to be gone at 10 within minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, the one at one is going to be gone within that one minute. And the one at four, it's like within seconds and it's gone okay. uh, because there's, there's just less and less uh, boarding groups available. The only problem I have, and I don't think that has changed, 
you can still take a boarding pass for your whole family, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's that's the only thing that I like, especially when when the ride opened, we were a group of four. All four had four people in their party. So when the ride opened months ago, I did it four times the four the, the, the same day because we had four people in our party with four boarding passes for four people. Okay, so that that probably works a little oh, differently. Wow. Like I was like I was saying before is I went in to the app and I picked like I picked Jill, Jason, and me, uh, and and went through and chose all of us, and you know then went to the next screen that said, hey, you can't do kind of like with a fast pass. These people have other plans. You can't use them. Mm -hmm. So then I had to go back and remove them. So I don't think you can do that anymore um, okay. because I think Tom well, booked the one for Jill and Jason again. One of stress. Jason booked for himself. I want to stress that right now that Jason booked for himself. <laughs> well, that's one of the things that I was afraid that you would be able to do that and just add people to your party and then ride it four times and other people don't have the opportunity to do so. And that's where a regular waiting line is just like you get in line, you scan your bands and they know you're not going to be able to do it twice. Yeah. You have to do and that that's, though. With that's a good thing. They, they do scan your band when you're coming in, though, too, to make sure that you have one. So I do think that that's all connected. But, you know, the, the, the system you're talking about, Hagrid's is still that way at Universal is I can yeah. like and, and we did that is I is we went in and it was like we chose, you know, somebody in our group chose everybody uh, that they wanted and hit reserve and was like, wait a minute, you can do that, too. And so we rode Hagrid's two times in a row because we could yep. both get boarding you know get those those yep. um those groups for each other so i i'm i mean i'm kind of glad that disney has had kind of like buttoned that part down i still the the boarding group thing still strikes fear in my heart because if you can if you have a family <laughs> and you're going there and you're the first time and you get in there and you try to get it and you miss it then it's just you're done and you can't go like stand and stand by like you can with fast pass it's like okay i don't have a fast pass but i really want to ride flight of passage so i'm willing to wait three hours you cannot do that with uh with with rise and i kind of get it because of how how popular it is and people would be riding it over and over again so if this keeps it so that it's fair that everyone gets one shot at it per day then i think that that works um the but the pre-show thing that you're yeah, exactly. So the pre-show thing that you were talking about, though, like, again, I can't imagine them having opened that attraction rise without having every element that was in there, um, because it is just so important to the story. And now, granted, yeah. if I had known when we got in line that Mickey and Minnie didn't have a pre-show, I might have opted out just because mm -hmm. I wanted, you know, maybe my first time to be with the pre-show because like you said, Axel, you know, you need to know what's going on. That pre-show tells you I, I was lost. I mean, it was, it was neat, you know, to, to be what? able to ride it for the first time, but there was, I mean, if the, if it told you anything else, I have no idea. Why would they, I like, so if, if the Mickey Minnie's runaway railway pre-show is basically like like you know what's going to happen it's the the intro it's part of the attraction um why would that not have the pre-show it can't be space because there's smaller spaces for pre-shows where they're still have them like at rise of the resistance or at um, flight of passage flight of passage, uh, yeah, flight of passage dinosaur like the the areas for the pre-shows are still happening and they figured out a way to space people up but why not mr because uh, they don't yeah, have I'm... the space to do so do you then that yeah and that's the, in small room the, the line like, for for are, flight are of passage smaller? is huge it, i think it's just a capacity wise it's, it's going to be like too too much people waiting to get into that pre-show gotcha. and having a line that's backed up way into the middle of the park. And I hope they do so as crowds build up. I hope it's not a standard for each and every ride uh, you're going to do that. They're just going to open that, that screen and let you walk in because that's just no fun. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, in, in addition to that, though, when we were talking about pre-shows, you know, Axel, you touched on Tower of Terror uh, and the fact that you don't have a pre-show on Tower anymore. You walk in, you walk up, you walk through the library and you walk through the boiler room and right on to uh, right onto the ride, which, you know, to me, 
having done it, uh, you know, dozens of times, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with skipping that room. And the fact that I could almost walk directly right up to the elevator before I had to like even break stride sometimes was great. But one of the things that we noticed was we were approaching tower to go ride it. And it said 13 minute wait. And before we got there, it went 60. And I think that they flipped it because they were cleaning vehicles. They did tell yeah. us inside they were doing that. And we saw that happen a lot uh, where they would – it's a small world did it, where they would bump up uh, the wait time uh, because they had to go through and do cleaning. So you know, for people who are going, don't always let the wait time um, like – keep you from doing the attraction because it may just be temporary uh, that they're doing that. These cleaning processes, I thought, were very efficient the way they did it, especially, you know, going back to the land and how they would, you know, spray them down uh, and then wipe them off and then send the boat on its way. And then the next one would roll up. I'm glad they're doing it. I'm glad they're taking their time to do it. And even with the cleaning process, a lot of these lines for attractions are still much shorter than they ever were uh, pre-COVID. So, it is neat to go in and be able to ride these things and a lot of them without the weight. Um, but while all that was great at Magic Kingdom uh, yesterday, there was an uncomfortable amount of people there to me uh, yesterday. It was Saturday, which makes sense. It's a Saturday in July. Um, but I don't know what they're doing as far as capacity goes, but it's a small world line wrapped out of the building and down into the tangled bathrooms. And so that was not what yeah. I was used to seeing the rest of the week. I don't know if they're opening things up more uh, or what, but that was that was a little bit uncomfortable. I don't know if you guys have, have been in the parks and seen sort of as the week's gone on a rise and how many people are there or not? Today, today uh, both Peter Pan and Small Worth, when I was there this afternoon, had a 15 minute wait everything was was inside so it wasn't like backed up uh, they did change the, um, the procedure of, of cleaning and uh, time indication uh, the first few days they would just um, display no time at all like the ride was down um, so we were like okay is the ride down no we're cleaning so that's why we took the time away uh, probably because people won't estimate. line up so it, it is weird. It's, it's way more logical that they would just add the time that they think is needed to clean the ride. And you go on it with the right expectation. You see 60, when it's going to be 50, you're going to be very happy. Uh, when you see 15 mm -hmm. and it's going to be 60, you might not be the happy camper. Yeah. Yeah. So they inflate those lines because they, I think somebody said it, I don't know if it was in the last pressing issues or if it was on news tonight, but they're not giving out those red cards. So it's, like in this like they can't estimate right now like okay when the line gets to this point it's about 45 minutes but now the line's at this point and they haven't like not all cast members have seen the line at this point with the six foot distancing for like that many times so it's kind of more difficult and challenging to give a a, a really close estimation um plus with the cleanings like you tack on like a, a certain chunk of time so a lot of times i'll go on a ride and it'll say 20 minutes 25 minutes and i just walk on and i wait for like literally two or three minutes but it's possible that they'll stop the ride for cleaning at some point and it will go up to 20 minutes but most of the time if it says 20 it i just walk on yeah hey axel is it the haircut or is it the the accent why are people in the chat loving you so much tonight is it just your rugged good looks um i mean man I they're know. just um, they're, um, they're 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 basically yeah. saying you should run for president you're a rock yes, star. And I'm not married. I'm not married to a Kardashian, nor am I a rapper. So I don't think I'm gonna mm. make it to be president. Unfortunately, wow. I'm sorry. All right. Well, no. I, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna keep it's, an eye on you and accent. figure out what you're doing. Do you think? Let's let's be honest. If you have a good accent, you become governor of California. So you're all good. <sighs> that must be it. Um, all right. So back to the you know park uh, stuff. Um, <clears throat> the <laughs> The uh, the you were talking about like the food booths and the people like you know selling popcorn and ice cream and all that kind of stuff. There are a lot of them that are closed throughout the parks, and I I mean that was one of the things I noticed, uh, especially in Animal Kingdom around that circle uh, around the tree. There are a lot of those booths that are closed, so I assume that it's probably to save money or because they don't have the staffing or because it would be a lot to get food out to them. Um, but it's also good because it creates like, you know, there's more social distancing because they don't clog up the, 
you know, the walkways and they don't have the opportunity to sell you those ice cream bars and things that you would stop and eat as much. There's still some open, absolutely, but they're a lot less open than there used to be. But one of the things yeah. that pops out to me as an addict of popcorn buckets is that they have a lot of popcorn buckets and some of them like I didn't expect to see again, like the uh, Steamboat Mickey and Minnie popcorn buckets are oh. still available. Uh, the Simba popcorn bucket was available. Uh, the Millennium Falcon them. was still available. The um, the the little green men uh, were available. So I was excited about that. I was sad that I didn't pack a bigger suitcase to bring back more um, than I did. Again, mm -hmm. I have a, a, a huge popcorn bucket problem because they do really good ones. And of course, I step up and say, "Hey, yes, I would like a popcorn bucket. Please don't put popcorn in it." You know, and they're <laughs> like, "Yep." Yeah, same thing with the Spike the Bee Sipper. They're like, yes, uh, we understand. I will give you a different cup, and then you know, and then I carry it around all day. Um, but food in general, I know that uh, the Axel want to talk about this a little bit about studios. Um, you know, studios in Epcot are two of the biggest parks for good sit-down restaurants. And we we went and we did um, primetime fifties and we did sci-fi when we were there. Primetime fifties, it was interesting that when we got there and we sat down, there was a guy. His name is Mark. I know that I've had him before because one of his favorite things to do is he says, "My favorite is the chicken." And then later he'll go, "Hey, Margaret." Tell them what my favorite is, and she'll go, the chicken. See, I told you, the chicken. I mean, that's like kind of his <laughs> shtick. He's a great guy. Um, he was talking about the fact that uh, that everything is now uh, on a cook-to-order basis. And I think we'd all like to believe it's always cook-to-order. Um, but when we were there, he was so rushed whenever we would say anything. It was like, oh, okay, we'd like the onion rings. He goes, onion rings, and he leaves. We haven't had a chance to put in drink order, haven't had a chance to do anything else, but he just left so he could put that in so that the onion rings would be ready by the time we were ready to do the next thing. And they were probably the best onion rings I've ever had because they were nice and fresh. And, uh, you know, I felt, I felt like I ran into that a lot with those restaurants. And Axel, I see you shaking your head. How did you feel about the quality of the food after opening and then also uh, the experience you had at Hollywood Studios? Really good. The only thing is Jason sent me a message from the plane saying, shouldn't you guys take a break? I think he's following on one of those little plane screens. <laughs> If he's following, he's, why isn't he I on? Think, I Jason. think he's. I think he's. He needs a nap from from his watching us on his little TV screen on the plane. So uh. I'm not sure <laughs> if we continue. You're the host, Rob. You decide. Uh, well, if we continue, you know I'll, I'll... I, I think that uh, if you guys are up for it, I mean, we can power through for another 45 minutes and then just call it straight at 10. What do you think? Sure, hey, let's do it. Fine with me. By the way, okay. somebody somebody's saying in the chat that I don't wear a watch. I I, I do wear a watch. Yeah, it okay, has so a Mickey on it. Um, the food, like, and and overall, the food uh, in in Disney, and doesn't matter since it reopened, uh, hotel or park wise, um, it's been hot. Like I haven't yeah. had a warm meal at Disney in forever because like the camera eats first. Um, so you take <laughs> a thousand pictures and video and then you're, you're able to eat and you're always going to eat like a lukewarm meal. Like, ah, eh, it's going to be better. Um, uh, no, everything has been, has been perfect. Um, I think it's, there's less people. Um, uh, the, um, the kitchen is, is, I don't know if they're more relaxed and they, or they're happy to be back. They follow better. I don't know what it is, but the food has been really good. Uh, besides my trip to Cosmic Rays, um, but anyways, all the rest was good. I think Cosmic Rays just—they gave us the chicken that was there on March fifteenth, and just said, we were oh. there the first day. I think I just got unlucky. <laughs> like here we have a chicken burger. Are you sure? Like it seems green. Like, yeah, but it's Cosmic <laughs> oh, no. Rays, so why not? Um, <laughs> No, but everything everything has been really good. And I went to the first day I was at studios, I was there by myself. Um, so at the end of the day, because it was a heavy day, we did, we did a lot of stuff. I said like, you know, I need to sit down, I need to unwind. So I went to sci-fi. Um, it went Fun. really nice. It was like, take your time, please sit down. Um, up on that point where he brought me my dessert, and I was sitting there and I turned around and I was the only one in the whole restaurant, which was nice what? because I was able to take pictures, 
But then what time after, was it? Oh, it was after. I think it was forty-five minutes after closure. Um, oh. But then I was the, I was the only one. I was like, okay, I have my pictures. Where's the waiter? There was nobody. I thought like they've all left. They forgot me. Like I'm I'm here. Somebody's gonna turn off the lights and it's gonna be dark. That's gonna be it. Oh, that'd be awesome. So and and the, the and it's still you, you don't want to go walk around uh, and do stuff even with a mask on. You're still in a restaurant. So I still tried to go by the rules. And I was like, I was looking like, where is he? And after 20 minutes, he was there all relaxed, like, oh, here you go. Here's your check. Like, <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. And then walked out of the park. I was the only one. So everything food-wise has been pretty good. Even the mac and cheese at, at Epcot was, was pretty good. I don't know if Rob tried at least the mac and cheese. I did try the did mac you? and cheese. Like, yeah, because like, you know, I could use a fork on that one. Um, the, uh, the Buffalo mac and cheese was really good at Epcot. I honestly, I'm going to, this is a hot take. The, the best, uh, mac and cheese I had the entire time I was there was yesterday. We ate at the, um, Liberty <clears throat> tree and it was the best I I've had in forever. And that includes really? at Liberty tree. Yeah, it was really good. Um, I know that they make it a little bit better at uh, garden grill because they throw three, uh, cracker goldfish on top of it. Um, but I, you know. <laughs> I, I we had five. five. Oh man, you know what? It's because it was you, Axel. It was because it was you. You just you can't you think, command that kind of. Crowd. No, that's that's the they only see him thing coming you and share a table with Tom. No, the, the, you share a table with <laughs> Tom Corliss, and everybody shakes, and then all of a sudden you're, you're being there, and before you know, you're in the presidential suite. You don't get just one extra goldfish, two extra I, goldfish. Mm, yeah, no, but Liberty, I don't know. Liberty Tree was was one. We did that the very first day at Magic Kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it was it was a busy day. We wanted to sit down. Um, the only thing with, with the Liberty Tree is they were kind of fast, so we were still having our salad, and they were there with the entrees, and 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 then I needed to like slow them down and say, okay, we're just going to finish our entree, and then you can bring the dessert, like. Keep cool. It's okay. We'll, we'll be out here when we need to be. Here's one thing that happened to me yesterday at <clears throat> that Liberty Tree is we were trying like uh, Kevin, uh, uh, who usually produces the show, uh, and I sat next to each other at Sanaa, and we were trying to figure out how to break the bread for bread service without touching each other's bread, um, oh. and that was a little bit of a nightmare. We were using forks, and it was kind of like a little bit of an operation. But <laughs> yesterday at Liberty Tree, uh, they have the rolls, and the rolls are all connected, and so people were putting their fork in and like popping one off, and I, mm -hmm. I just stuck it in and and tried to break it from the rest, and it fell onto the table, and I reached for it. And and like three people screamed at me and was like, don't touch that, Rob. Like, you know, don't do that. And I'm, I'm forgetting, like, you know, I mean, obviously they sanitize the tables, but I, at that, you know, for that second, I'm going, oh, you know, five second rule. I can certainly take this off the table. Um, but we are trying to, you know, trying to stay, you know, as, as, as covid friendly as possible so i didn't uh i did not eat it but it was really funny that moment when that happened um we did eat at a sci-fi um on uh, the day that we went to studios which i think was friday um and um sci-fi dinner was was pretty good we got um uh i got a burger and fries and the fries were just perfectly crisp uh you know i didn't even need like nice. ketchup or condiment or anything on it because they were just really good uh we had one of those tables where we face each other and tom was a little bit upset that because i think he wanted to see the screen and not me um so that was a little bit uh less fun but it was interesting how they you know were trying to space people out in in there and it wasn't full and i think that you know, I think for most of the restaurants, the rule is you cannot do walk up. Everything has to be a reservation. And so if people are canceling the reservations, I think that it's my understanding they just don't fill it. Um, you know, maybe you can still get a reservation at the last minute if you're still looking, but there was a pretty empty place uh, and it had been a hard reservation to get in the first place to be able to be there because it was so empty um, the way it was laid out. Everything else was normal uh, when we were in there. One of the other things I noticed about Liberty Tree yesterday was that the woman was wearing a mask and the face guard, the face shield, mm -hmm. most of the rest of the people oh. in there were, but like they early don't. on, like, yeah. yeah, exactly. June, June 22nd, when they opened up just DVC, I had eaten at um, Beaches and Cream and they just were wearing masks. So I, I don't know, but it looked like everyone in Liberty, <clears throat> Liberty Tree was 
wearing the face shield. Maybe it's because people like are glutton and they eat everything and it's food flying everywhere. I don't know why that they would have to do it there, but that was one thing that we noticed. So because we're talking about food and I don't want to go too much off of topic, but I was seeing things appear in, in the chat. Sure. Um, WDWNT is, is, we have a big group of people. Um, we have never been with a bubble that goes above 10, even when we're more than 10. When at the points mm -hmm. where we were more than 10 from WMT, we were seated at different tables. So it was the California Grill, so it was Sanaa. Um, and when we had our dinner at the cabin yesterday, that was our bubble of those 10 people. So not, not going above that. And that's been since a month, uh, like, like uh, starting when everything opened again. Um, at the very beginning, it was like just four. It was like Tom, uh, Canadian girlfriend, me, Belgian wife, and, and that was it. And then the, the bubble grew, but we've never crossed uh, the 10 that we were in in our bubble. And that's 10 which I think everybody within those 10 already got tested, if not multiple times. So just so you know, and everybody, we are very safe and we do know what we're doing. Uh, even though we talk about sitting together at restaurants, uh, know that we don't take any risks um, for myself. I know I have a test every week. Uh, I know others uh, within uh, our, our uh, group have been tested multiple times as well. Uh, I know I'm a special case for every week. I mean, that's my employer. That's not me. But hey, um, I mean, I can I can still. So don't we're doing good, uh, and it's always within really consideration of everybody's health. So be cool in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't. I did not notice that that was a thing in the chat. But I, I agree with you. I mean, this was like this week was the first time I spent time with everybody, and I think everybody. I mean, we weren't like high fiving and shaking hands and doing the things that we normally would do yeah. when we would meet up with each other. We were keeping, you know, a pretty safe distance and you know wearing a mask whenever we would not be. Um, you know, sitting there for a meal, um, then you, you know, you're going to take your mask off when you're eating anyway. Um, but I, I agree. We, I think, I think that we understand how important it is, um, you know, to stay safe. And I think that's why we can respect it when we see it in the parks is how, how great a job that the, uh, that Disney is doing in, uh, in, in keeping us safe when we're out there. Um, speaking just a, a little bit more about, uh, about the studios, you know, it was really nice to be able to be in all four of the parks, but I really liked being back at the studios. It was interesting to me again, because I've never seen, I've never done Mickey and Minnie. I'd never done Rise. Uh, it was interesting to see how they set up Batu differently with only allowing a certain amount of people into the marketplace area at a time. Uh, they only allowed one party into each stall at a time. Um, and they were very militant about that. I mean, I, there was one guy stepping in at the cash register and I actually stepped in like a step into one of the stalls, the creature stall to see something. And the woman asked me to like step back out and they have a line there where you're supposed to not cross. Um, so they're very good about taking care of you that way. Um, the Savi's workshop, I don't know if that's something that most mm -hmm. people would be interested in, but I mean, I made uh, a, a lightsaber the first time that I went, but now when you go in, it is not the same experience with everybody standing there. They go in and that's where you can look to buy uh, some of the legacy swords, uh, the sabers that they had had uh, previously in Doc Ondar's, which is great because it, it takes that traffic out of Doc Ondar's and then it also makes it so that you can have almost like a one-on-one -on -one experience in there uh, with that, the with the lightsaber and still have a lightsaber when you leave so you don't get to make them anymore right now but you can go in and buy a legacy saber uh that's already pre-built so um i don't know if there's anything else you guys want to talk about specific to studios and your experience here i know i don't think allison you've been but uh, axel anything else you were thinking studios was um and, and still is for me the, the busiest park uh of, of all mm. four um, even today, uh, yesterday, and in, in, on a weekend, um, you still see that Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, even Epcot, don't come up to those weights that you see in, uh, in Hollywood Studios. So if you do plan to go, know that Studios is with attractions like Rise and, and Mickey's and Mini Railway, you're going to see a lot of people there. 
Uh, it's just like a, a, a popular park. I, can't, I don't know why people would want to see Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, but I get they want to see Rise. It's a new thing. Um, yeah. Uh, but still, it's it's one of the busier parks, uh, so know what you get yourself into, um, as well as the only the, the good thing is their um, relaxation station is one of the biggest I've seen in any of the parks. Uh, Star Wars Launch Bay, outside, inside. I'm not sure how much the air is is doing you any good inside. But it's a huge place where you have fans, you have uh, air conditioning. So, so you do have a chance to, to breathe and take off your mask if you come out of the hot sun from Toy Story Land. What's the, Axel, because you've been to all four of them. What's the least busy of the four? Animal Kingdom. Hmm. Animal Kingdom has been a consistent... Like I was there two two days ago, yeah, two days ago, and the longest wait was to get a table at Yak and Yeti. Like that was it. Mm -hmm. uh, both of the Pandora rides had five minutes. Uh, it was five oh. minutes for the safari. So at this point, and it hurts me to say that, Animal Kingdom is a half day park if you just want to do rides. If it's mm -hmm. just going from run ride to another, like we we did Animal Kingdom. I think I've been there three three times by now. Uh, we did it in an afternoon as well. We arrived by two thirty, and and by five thirty, we had done everything. Wow. Like besides the two the two shows like a Bug's Life and then the uh, Flight the Bird Show, um, mm -hmm. but every uh, everything else we we we've done and we we crossed off that list so yes the least busy animal kingdom definitely you know i, I would agree with you we did five minutes flight of passage and i was like i took a picture because i'm thinking you may never see this again for flight of passage um it was amazing to do i think it <laughs> takes you five minutes to get through the queue uh so it was basically walk on um navi river journey we did all those things too and i do think though that if you're the type of person that goes to a park just for rides especially at animal kingdom you're missing something because there are a lot of other things still even in you know in the the situation we're in now to do when you're there if you take the train out to rafiki's planet watch and you walk out through there and you go up and you see the animals they are still showing the animals uh they, they're still out you can't go in and pet them but you can see them there and they, they have people there to tell you about them one thing we learned when we were up there was that they had a, a, a group of goats that they named after 80s icons. So there was one named Tubbs and one <laughs> named Kit. And they named the um, next group after 90s icon. Yeah, 90s icon. So there was a Phoebe and... Um, and and a topanga um so it was really neat to Aww. to learn a lot more uh, up there and then they also if you walk through the building you get to see all the things that are happening there and they have the the drawing class is still happening so you could do that there are a lot of things that i think that if you just go because you want to do flight of passage uh expedition everest and dinosaur and get out you can do that but you're missing out on some other things and you know yeah. at the same time to your point it, because there weren't long lines, you didn't have to wait a, a long time to ride on all of these rides when you were there. No, and I've, I've seen like, right now you don't have any other options. Like if you're done mm -hmm. there, it's not that you can go to any other park. So, or you're gonna leave the parks for the day or you're gonna stay and stick around. Um, I mean, there's so much to do at Animal Kingdom. Um, for me, it's my favorite park. I had families in front of me at, at uh, Flight of Passage, and the kid goes like, oh, it's our eighth time. I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's how you can spend your time as well. I prefer to do eight safaris because you know those are going to be different eight mm -hmm. times. Uh, but everybody has his, his favorite. I think least busy park, uh, Animal Kingdom, Magic Kingdom has been pretty good as well. Uh, besides Splash Mountain, where everybody now stands in line to do to do the rides, but it, it's been pretty nice as well. Today, like on a Sunday, uh, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train had to have 25 minute wait. 
Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things you got that I think got brought up a little bit last week on pressing issues too was that because the lines don't have fast pass anymore and because the lines are short, I've gotten to see cues that I haven't seen in years. Um, I know I went with Jason and and he had never been through the Peter Pan interactive queue because he's always fast pass that attraction. Funny. And it's great. Yeah. And it was, matter of fact, it was almost too good because when you have to wait in there, you see all of the effects with Tinkerbell flying around. This one, you just, Mm -hmm. I mean, you just walked right through it to get on. We literally walked on to Peter Pan uh, through that queue. But I had forgotten how cool the queue for the safari is that you go through that registration area that was there. I forgot how cool that uh, the one for for Expedition Everest was with the little museum that's along the way. Um, There are a lot of those that I haven't seen in forever. And that was kind of another neat experience. The same thing with Flight of Passage. I've only seen that the first time I went, um, and I haven't been back through it since. So when on, I think it was News Tonight, they did like, hey, best, you know, best cues. Some of these I haven't seen in a while because I've had to do Fast Pass every time. Yeah, um, that's something that a lot of people do. They just go through the Fast Pass. And I think I did the Flight of Passage queue once or twice. And that because it was a special event, and then, I mean, you're there, there's, there's no people there because it's a special event, so you just walk on through and you can see that, that queue, but it's, it's always at night. Um, it's still different if you can do it through the day, especially the outside, the part where you can take all the pictures. It's just beautiful. Um, and normally you're going to take your fast passes and walk by all the cool stuff. Yeah. Um, but you were talking about not being able to park hop. That is a little bit frustrating, especially because, you know, I'm only that you live there. I'm always only there for, for seven days and I didn't get to studios twice, which I'd have liked to have done. But I also only, I went to each of the other parks twice. So, uh, but it would have been nice on, you know, that second day of animal kingdom to be able to go, uh, to studios for a little while. So what we did do instead is we invented our own park hopping and we left the left animal kingdom and we went to universal and we went to islands uh-huh. and then we took the train from there and we went over to, uh, to the studios park. So we were able to do three parks in a day, just not three Disney parks in a day. And that is, uh, I'm hoping that's something that as they get a handle on how the, um, the the like the reservations are going and how the the you know the capacity is going maybe there might be a point i'm hoping where they loosen that up a little bit i don't know if they could go to a a two-park system at the very least but i do know that as an Mm -hmm. annual pass holder that is something that i'm paying for is the ability to park hop it is built in that and photo pass and you know parking and all those things are built into my ticket and so if you're not going to give me the park hopping you've already put a price on it it's on your website. You ask if somebody's buying a regular ticket for them to upgrade, and there's a price and value to that. I would love to see that return to me as an annual pass holder if that's if that's not going to come back sometime soon. Um, and that is that's kind of borderline a rant. I know earlier they were saying is if Jason's <laughs> not going to be here, who's going to rant? Um, that's my borderline <laughs> rant. But I do think that it really is something that they need to address at some point. If it's going to be gone for a year. Two years, whatever, they, they need to adjust for that. And don't get me wrong, I love the fact that while I was there, they added that extra 10% for annual pass holders, so you get 30% instead of 20 um, something they call a surprise and delight, which means they can do it and then take it away. It's not a new thing that's going to last forever, but it is nice that it's there, and it made me then want to spend 10% more than I was willing to spend before because now I get to buy more stuff. Um, yeah. So it worked in their favor more than it worked in mine, but it was a nice perk to have. I just think that they need to address a few more things on the annual pass holder side. Yep. Um, any more things about the parks? Because we have one more topic that we were going to discuss, uh, and that is about some closings. Are you guys good on those for now? Um, I'm I'm good. Like um, the only the only topic that wasn't on tonight um, is we are we still going to talk about Hong Kong closing? Because like, um, if we if we talk about international parks, I want my five minutes for my park that's nearest to my heart, and that's Disneyland Paris that reopened. Uh, and which let's is do, totally different than all the parks here in the U.S. So let, let's so you... talk about this first and then we'll hold that to the end, because as popular as you've been tonight, if we tell them there's a five minute rant from or 10 minute rant from Axel at the end, they're going to stick on to the very end. So that's exciting. <laughs> um, 
So while we were there, and Axel alluded to this earlier, that they that they took out Mary Poppins and and Cherry Tree Lane not coming uh, from Epcot. We already knew they weren't going to do Spaceship Earth, but they have kind of shown that by removing that from the Epcot experience. Um, they talked about they were going to to change the plan for the Festival Center um, at Epcot that it wouldn't be what we had seen originally uh, for now. And what we saw originally was a very uh, big plan for what that festival center would be. Obviously projects like Reflections that they could just spray grass seed over now and shelve, uh, it's it's a bad time financially. So I get when it's a project they haven't gotten that deep into yet. But what we heard then was that there were some things that aren't gonna be coming back. Um, Stitch's Great Escape, which I think if you asked any of us, we would have already gone, well, no, duh, we know that's not coming back. We've seen the animatronics strip <laughs> Of it, you know, stripped of its skin. We know that's not coming back. It's been a meet and greet forever. Uh, that they said that Primeval World's not coming back. Well, again, that was one that was down for so much of last year that it's not a surprise that that wouldn't be coming back. And then the one that surprised me a little bit was Rivers of Light not coming back. Um, and again, I think if you asked any of us, uh, I'm the biggest pixie duster of all of us here and probably uh, at WDWNT, but I I even don't like Rivers of Light. I wish it was something <laughs> better than it was. So, um, you know, uh, Though that surprised me, but I wasn't I wasn't expecting it. But I'm actually not disappointed in in that at all. As a matter of fact, all three of these I'm okay with. So I mean, I don't know what you guys are thinking about it, but I think that it's kind of sad to see Stitch go and not have his own attraction. That was just not the attraction that I wanted for Stitch. So I'm okay that that's not happening. Yeah, I, I'm not shedding any tears over any of these. I don't hate Rivers of Light. I don't hate it. I know like a lot of people don't like Rivers of Light at all. I think it's fine. Like, it's like if I happen to be in Animal Kingdom when it's happening and I've done everything else, I'm fine with like, sitting there and you've got some lovely music I can listen to and it's fine. I'm not shedding any tears over it leaving. Uh, but... You know, if you if you had a friend coming from out of town and said, "Hey, don't," I mean, you know, they, if they said, "Hey, what about Rivers of Light?" What would you say to them? Uh, you could take it or leave it. I would probably tell them. <laughs> you could take it or leave fine. it. Like, hey, do you, would you would you rather go to beat the crowd and go to Disney Springs or something like that, or do you just want to get off your feet for a little while and listen to some very nice music? So yeah. that would be up to them. They spent so much money on this, though, and it, they, they did this whole, uh, ar, you know, this, like, basically this arena for it, um, mm -hmm. this amphitheater for it. Uh, they, there was all this promise of how the floats would interact with each other, and it was just going to be this huge, great pageant, and then it was delayed, and they put the Jungle Book alive with garbage in its place, and then they came around <laughs> and put, uh, they put, they put in Rivers of Light, and it was good, and sometimes it didn't work, and they didn't do the fire and the rain, and then they upgraded it to with some Lion King IP to see if that would save it. Um, I think that when I look at an attraction like World of Color, which mm -hmm. is so amazing in Disney California Adventure, I don't understand why they couldn't have done World of Color right there. I know part of the exp the reason they can't do fireworks and, and things like that is because of the animals that are there. Sure. I feel like they could have done World of Color there, though. Hmm. That's a good point. That is a good point. What about, what about you, Axel? Um, I'm not like a stitch. I mean, it was, I've, I've walked there today. Like it's, it's been a character meet and greet and that's it. I hope they find a better purpose for, for that space. Uh, so I really don't care about that. Uh, primeval world. I did it once. Uh, I thought I was going to die. Uh, so I'm happy <laughs> that that's going to be gone. Uh, but again, in the situation we are right now, uh, meaning that we see projects getting canceled, which basically means the money we have, we want to spend on the things that are already ongoing, uh, Guardians, Tron, um, name it. Um, I mean, so, yeah. like, honestly, like, yeah, Ratatouille, uh, although they can just, like, remove that, that's garbage. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> the, the other thing is like, now we're just going to have an empty building sitting there in the entrance of Tomorrowland, we're going to have an, an empty, what do you call primeval war? Is it even a coaster? You're going to have an, an, an empty pile of metal just sitting there because you know they're not going to do anything with it.
because there's no mm -hmm. money. Um, Rivers of Light has seen so many adaptions from being at 100 performers and, and being awesome to having no performers at all and being like, eh, do you want to see that? Uh, the main part why, why I'm sad that Rivers of Light is going is because the dining package is going. And mm -hmm. pro tip for everybody in the chat and everybody's watching, uh, the dining package at Tiffin's, that's the best deal you're ever going to get. Yeah. I mean, you get an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert for the price of one entree at Tiffin's. Mm -hmm. And you can take anything you want off that menu. So that's a great value and a great deal. We did that package when we went to Tiffin's and then ending up not going to Rivers of Light. Because like, it's just such a good deal. Now yeah. that's going to disappear as well. So that's, that's the only reason why I'm really sad that it's gone. Uh, but again, it's... The, the, the seats are there. The water hasn't gone anywhere. I'm sure they still have a lot of the floats and, and the lotuses and, and whatever. So I think when things start to to come back and then the money comes back in, I'm sure they're going to change it. And I can only believe they can make something better out of it. Uh, for those of you who know uh, the Jungle Book Jive at Disneyland Paris, I'm just naming that one thing which is awesome. If they could bring that energy to that place, I think they could do something much better. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm still hopeful that something will happen with, with that one. The other two are just going to stay there until Disney has, has the funds again to do something or to just remove it. Well, you what make if... a great point, though. Go ahead. What if so you have Stitch and it's like, you know, like the skin is off, right? What if they take it and they make it a scary experience again, but they have like this kind of dismantled Stitch, like without the skin. So it can kind of be like Alien Encounter, but with Stitch at the same time. I just write. No. Uh, what's it called? Ride Rehabbed. No. Stitch is Great no. Escape. No? If, if you're what? Gonna, if you're going to go on that right now and that thing comes down, you're going to have a lot of other diseases besides COVID. Yeah. Just, <laughs> that thing is just, are, like, you don't want that. There are a lot of issues with that. You know, I mean, that, that theater system was, you know, mission to uh, rocket to the moon, mission to Mars, uh, you know, it changed to other things. And it was, it was, it's such a small, awkward space that in Disneyland, they made it a restaurant. So, you know, it would be interesting to see a sit down restaurant in Tomorrowland. Um, and maybe that's what they end up doing. We knew there was a rumor they were going to do a Wreck-It Ralph attraction here. Um, you know, I'd like to see it be something else other than it, what it's been is a theater in the realm with something in the middle. You look at it, it's been that over and over again. And anytime you can reimagine it, I, I, that's great. I think Stitch, to me, was was a, a good attraction. I thought the animatronic was great. Um, I like the Stitch story. I just wish Stitch would get something better than that. Um, yeah. But it was one of the things that consistently most people that I, almost everyone that I know went this is this right this attraction's garbage like why did i do that he burped a, a chili dog in my face that was horrible uh, i never want yep. to do that again i've done it once i never want to do it again um axel makes a great point though primeval world is a huge thing it's a huge eyesore and it's already not being maintenance because in the florida sun the paint and the color is already starting to fade, um, and it's just a, it's just a ginormous thing. So I like it when they can take an attraction and make it something better. Or so if you're going to take away something, put something in its place. I don't think that in the, our current situation that there is going to be anything in its place for for quite a while. So in that way, it's, it is a little mm -hmm. sad to me that that was one more thing that was a people eater, one more thing that people could do and ride in a park that we mentioned earlier could almost be a half day park. So if it's a maintenance issue and it's not safe, great. Just, mm -hmm. you know, let's let's get it out. But you should be able to remove that thing and it not be this huge eyesore, um, you know, down there in Dino Land. So, but I don't, I, I mean, that's going to cost money to remove it. So I don't know if that's going to be something that's going to be big on their list a to do. Money. It'll just be there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, overall, I, I think that all three of these, I'm not, you know, like, like you said, Alice, I'm not shedding a tear about any of these. None of these are things <laughs> that I would have like, you know, gone down there for their big closing event. Right. I mean, yeah. Yeah. you know, we, we did a closing event for great movie ride. Um, sure. you know, we had talked about doing one, uh, with a couple other attractions. So I, this one, I, these are all okay to go away, but it wasn't an official, uh, announcement. It was a, a note to cast members. 
uh, that we that yeah. we picked up this information. So it was very, and, and I don't, I guess you don't have a big parade when you're shutting stuff down. So that that kind of kind of makes sense that they wouldn't have been loud about this one. Um, I, it just makes me wonder now as they move forward and as they continue to see you know loss in money as there's still people who are afraid to go to the parks because of uh, coronavirus. What might be next? I mean, some of the things like. Um, the Paris expansion uh, the, and or the France expansion and uh, Guardians of the Galaxy are too far not to push forward and get them done. But yeah. obviously there are some things that they can pull back on and not do. Um, so speaking about pulling back on things, as Axel mentioned before, Hong Kong Disneyland, one of the first ones to close and then open is now closed again. Um, and I think that a lot of people pointed that out to you know to say hey if they are worried about this why are we not worried about this in florida why is florida still allowed to mm -hmm. stay open um and 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 i it's hard to answer that question because oh, yeah. you know we still see our numbers in this country going way up when it comes to coronavirus we know that florida in general has been a hotbed even though we talked at the top of the show about we think they're doing so many good things there to keep things safe um, you know, I, it worries me when they feel like it's it's a problem to close there that we may see these parks mm -hmm. in Florida close at some point. What do you guys think? It's not a dizzy decision. It's like the 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 state is is a is a major uh, shareholder of of the park has too much stakes in it, so they decided to close again. And that's the reason why Disneyland California isn't open. It's not Disney's decision. It's the state of, the state of California says like, no way. Uh, and that's just a state. Like Hong Kong, is, it's different. Like there's money, there's, there's, there's Hong Kong money in it. There's Chinese money in it. And yeah. they say like, no go, it's like too risky. We're not gonna do it. Um, and then with a 45% stake, they can say like, oh no, we're, we're we're closing down again, we'll be good. I mean, and Disney is okay with it because maybe the money is gonna come from their side. So they, they don't really care at this point, I don't know, but it's not a Disney decision. Yeah, uh, no, ag agreed. But I mean, it, it is also a precedent. I mean, they're setting a precedent there mm -hmm. that says, hey, we are closing this and there, it's not Disney's decision, it's the government decision. But, you know, the Florida governor at some point could say, you know, like they've made this 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 decision here, you know, get and he could get pressure to close there. Obviously, we know that's not what he wants. Uh, you know, and in California, they never opened in the first place. So it's, it's mm -hmm. state to state. It also seems weird to me that within the same country, and I know it's based on where the cases are worse. California has no Disney and we are like alive and kicking and tons of, you know, and four parks open in Florida. Um, it seems kind of crazy that in the same country that that's happening, but it does make sense. And it's based on, you know, the different, the, the politics in the different areas or the politicians in the different areas and also the spread and how much it's happening. Um, and so it's with like the Tom said, oh, sorry. It's like Tom said in his, in his live, I think yesterday or today. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to put the little uh, advertising in here for the live. So be sure during the day to see live from the park. We have daily uh, live content from the park. So be sure to check that out. But it's like Tom was saying, um, being here in Orlando, that's, that's all the city has. Like Anaheim has, has a lot of other income. If Disney doesn't open, Anaheim is not going to do bad. The city of Anaheim is not going to mm. have any problems. Orlando is going to have a lot of problems. Being here, uh, living here, I mean, on one side, we, we, do, we can't complain, especially tax-wise. We're doing, we're doing great. Uh, mainly, this is because of all the tourists. And, and this city just depends on that tourism so badly, so, yeah. so badly, that as long as it still can be in a safe way, which I believe Disney and Universal are still doing, it's going to have to reach another level before they say, we're going to look into closing again. Uh, Orlando, without the tourists and without the parks, is is a mess and and uh they know that very well you're muted rob 
Well, you know what? I just like to throw a curveball in every now and then just to see if you guys are paying attention. <laughs> um, so uh, that's uh, just a great point about that is that, um, you know, from where I am, I have always been able to get a, a direct flight on Southwest from here to Orlando until – the parks closed and then you couldn't do that anymore. And so even when I wanted to go down in June uh, for the opening of the DVC resorts, that was still not possible. Once the Disney parks opened, now I have direct flights again. It's that big a deal to not just Orlando, but the but the airlines that fly into Orlando. I mean, there are a lot of things that, that depend on that happening. And so I agree with you that that uh, that they're going to need to keep it open as long as possible, and uh, and I think to that point, Disney is doing again, like we said, a great job in making sure that they can then turn around and say, hey, look, we are doing everything we can. We have, you know, Advent Health is there at the opening to take your temperature before you go in, so they're checking mm-hmm. you there. They have the security systems that they're upgrading. That that the security systems that we talked about on the on on uh, WDWNT about being able to walk through instead mm-hmm. of having your bag checked. Uh, those are all awesome I, I saw those at animal kingdom and i even got stopped at one uh they do them at international gateway now too so coming in from uh from epcot they have them there as well so when you come in you walk through and they have an ipad and they see what things you have and they may stop you and ask you to look at something um but it is so much better so i think that they've invested a little bit there to try to alleviate some of the issues in getting into the park and them touching your stuff um you know it just in general they are going out of their way as they should be to make sure that we are safe and that we feel safe and i can say that you know without any doubt and i would tell this to everybody here i would tell it to family and friends that i felt safer uh in these disney parks than i have in almost anywhere i've been outside of my front door so with all that said we got like eight minutes left i need to hear everything you have to say about your favorite park in the world axel disneyland paris opened again i'm just going to say the things that are really different First one, they still can park hop. Second one, their floor markers to me are more clear as they have those big stickers like they have in the Asian parks where it says, do not stand here. Uh, We have like those little stickers where you say, okay, wait here and then go to the following line. If you have a big group in front of you, it's not always possible. So most of the cases, I just leave an extra one and then have people behind me like, why aren't you like moving on, like yeah. it's a big group. I'm going to keep my distance. So that's already, that's one thing. Uh, park hopping is possible. You can go from the Disneyland park to uh, Walt Disney Studios park. Although in Walt Disney Studios park, there's nothing to do, but at least you can do so. <laughs> I think it's more of a pity gamble than a, something else. Um, the two of the biggest differences and and that's something i've seen and for those of you who who haven't seen it go look it up uh there's there's plenty of pictures online their plexiglass uh dividers on on the rides in the queues they're just so much better the the Uh way they are put in there they are in team so the ones in in uh big thunder mountain have have are built in wood and then have this plexiglass in between uh the oh. ones at at remy's ratatouille are the same green are met, met, uh, are metal uh they're built over the the regular um uh, fences so, i mean it's done in in a in a in a way which makes it looks like it was meant to be and up here where it was just looking like they screwed it on last minute and it has to go fast fast so so a big kudos for that um and then the last thing uh something we we don't have at all here uh although it's from from far away with the country bears in magic kingdom or stitch uh, and bus in tomorrowland they have character distance meet and greets so every character is still in a spot even more so the stages where the shows usually happens, like Mickey and the Magician or the Marvel stunt show, you can now walk up the stage. There's two sets and there's a princess and there's Mickey just waiting to take their picture with you, distanced, but they're still meeting reads. So what you see in Paris is long waits for those characters. So again, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm a character person. So obviously I would love it, 
Uh, I'm not sure if I would want to wait 90 minutes, uh, even with their um, system that's called Lineberty. This is a virtual queue. Uh, but they're still doing that, which I was quite amazed that they still did it. Um, even in the parks, you can still meet and walk up to Goofy and then there's going to be a space in between. You're not going to stand next to him, but you're going to have your distance picture and everybody's just waiting in line to go and see the characters. So it's like, honestly, I'm, I'm surprised by Disneyland Paris, how they handled this. Um, it's nice to see that, uh, the characters are back they're bringing shows back. Um, I'm, I'm not sure in how far this is still a rumor, but one of my favorite shows, the jungle book jive, um, was in the Disneyland park. They went around central Plaza, went down to main street. The, the rumor says that this is now going to be happening on the stage of uh, motors action, which is a giant stage, plenty of seating. Uh, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, so yeah, it's, somebody, it's going to be pretty nice. Please. Somebody asked for your thoughts on the welcome home fountain show, Axel. I mean, those fountains have, have always been there. It's not like I'm happy they do something with it. At least they're, they're being used and, and it's not that it's so special. Uh, but I like the like Paris has always been known for, for his characters and to have a lot of characters. Um, when you see what they're doing, I think they're doing a great job. Um, and especially like for me, even the character, the characters, like everybody go look up those plexis in Disneyland Paris. They look way better than we have here in, in Orlando. Um, but still they opened, uh, they opened with reservations. Everything is, is going pretty nice. Uh, even more so they have a lot of commercials on TV to get people in there. They have uh, what they call friends tickets. So you can bring friends in, I think it's for 50 bucks. You can bring your friends to the park and then they're, they're doing a lot of things to get people back to the park. Um, so let's talk about that for one one minute since we have some time a little bit of time left. The 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 partitions and things when you're talking about the plexiglass, there are times where I look at it and I go, that looks like it has been put in for the long haul. Like that looks like mm. they went above and beyond to do this and make it something nice that may stay there forever. And I think like when you're checking into the hotels, those big glass um mm -hmm. fixtures they have with those metal bases and things like that. Um but then there's also the stuff like the plexiglass when you go into Big Thunder and you're going down and to the to the, like where you split off into two. That's claustrophobic because it, they're they're kind of yeah. leaning a little bit. Um, I felt really super uncomfortable about that. And you know, somebody with me was like, "Well, what? I mean, what did you expect them to do?" You're right. I mean, there's not much more you can do. It was it's always mm -hmm. been a narrow space, and it's usually hot, and you're like pressed up against other people. Um, the, that stuff looks a little bit temporary, but there is some stuff where they've clearly, and I know Pete's talked about this as a construction guy, like gone into the concrete and done some stuff that looks like it's there for the long haul. So, yeah. I, you know, I wish it was more themed. I wish it didn't look, uh, I, I said to my family today, it looked institutional, um, which is my fancy way of saying prison. But when you see that stuff <laughs> up there, you go through, it's it's just like, it's, some of it just doesn't feel right or feel Disney. Somewhere, sometimes like Flight mm -hmm. of Passage, it almost passes because it's like a almost futuristic, uh, you, you know, dystopian kind of a feel to it. Um, but in, in a lot of places it doesn't work. So my, my big question to you guys is that there's always going to be, you know, germs and disease and things and never hopefully again to the level that we have here, but should they keep these things up after we get to a vaccine or a cure or something to be able to treat uh, this pandemic, should they keep them up just for health and safety reasons in general? Or do you think they'll come back down? I feel like, I feel like they might come back down. I, I, I don't know. I think they're going to, to keep a lot of different kinds of health and safety things, but Disney is very protective over their theming. And I think that, either in the future they're going to really theme it up and keep it or they're going to take it down when they can. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Axel? Well, it's, I'm, I'm looking and I can't find the picture that I had for Paris. Uh, go look it up. The way that 
you see it, it it's being done in Disneyland Paris uh, looks like it's meant to stay. Like especially the, the investment they did uh, getting like the metal construction in the same color as the original color uh, using wood at Big Thunder Mountain. The way they did it here just seems like, okay, we're going to put it on. Uh, and some are just like with those, those hooks and, and they're, they're screwed on. I'm not sure if it's going to be for, for the long run. Uh, they're going to stay for, for quite a bit uh, because we're going to need it. The, this pandemic is, is way from being over. Um, but I think in most cases, they're going to take them away. And, and especially here in, in, in Orlando, the heat is just such a big part of it. And, and when it's already claustrophobic and it's already so warm, it's not the most comfortable place to be in. And I had, um, although it's inside uh, the Grand Fiesta uh, boat rides in, in Mexico Pavilion, you just go from one side to another and all those things are so close. And we were yeah. waiting in line there and I was like, whoa, this is like when I turn, I have a wall in my face on every side. Um, so it's, it's pretty claustrophobic, yeah. I do think there are going to be some of the safety things that they keep. I think that it would make sense like they have in Tokyo to do some permanent hand washing stations. Uh, I think that the ones they have that are the temporary are great that they're there, but I think that it makes it feel like the, just a step above porta potty when you see them. Um, so it'd be nice to have like some permanent hand washing stations put in, I think in places. And I think that's something that wouldn't be bad in, in any situation. And the same thing with, um, you know, with social distancing, maybe like any attractions they make look moving forward, the queues, maybe they take that into account when they're doing it. Um, but I, I think about stuff like rise and then, you know, Tron's coming Tron. I can't imagine that the lines won't be crazy for that. And I wonder if they're, if they're thinking the long haul about that, because like you said, the pandemic's going to be here for a while. It would really suck for them to put together this this great new attraction and then have to like you know bolt some plexiglass up after the fact. I hope they're they're yeah. keeping that in mind when they're doing it. But some of the stuff I do think you know is is common sense, like the hand washing that should take place. You know, giving people the option to wear masks in the park, which wasn't a thing before. They didn't want you to wear a mask if yeah. you're an adult in the park. Now they they beg and plead and demand that you wear a mask when you're in the park so <laughs> it'll be interesting to see how that mix happens especially like if this is over and they're like oh okay no more masks and you're like but you sold me 18 baby yoda masks where am i supposed to wear these now <laughs> um so i do think that there's some of that stuff that will stay some of it will change um you know it, it's a but i do think some of it makes sense and i still think back to 9 11 and the things that change in our world and in our disney world because of 9 11 that are still there today because they're still trying to keep us safe at every turn um i was in the airport on the way back and i heard them do an announcement and they were talking about uh, in the airport uh here about leaving bags behind and i thought man remember that when that was our worst problem was if somebody had an unattended bag and not that I was going to get COVID if I touched the water fountain. Um, so, you know, it's, it's definitely a lot of stuff to keep in mind. And it's, it's, uh, you know, I, I think just to, to close in on this, I do think that Disney has done an amazing job with opening these parks. All four parks are open now. I guess on deck is to see what they end up doing down the road with, uh, with the water parks. Um, and then also to see if, if they ever get pressured to, to close them up again. And I really hope that that's not the case because they really are doing a good job. Any other thoughts, Axel, Allison? No, uh, I'm still um, use this. Are we still, yes, no? Yeah, I'm, we're, I think you're bit. glitching a little bit. Okay, yeah, uh, am I good now? Oh, you are yeah. sexy as hell. All right, <laughs> so. The chat certainly, before, I think, before, thinks so. Before I say, before I say goodbye, I'm going to make some, like, be sure to subscribe to the channel and go check out our lives. Uh, Tom and me are uh, live almost every single day from one of the parks, so be sure to do that. And we have about 290 people watching. We need to get those likes up so we can show Jason that we did a great job. So if everybody just wants to click that like button and get that number up, just so we can show off to Jason. That's all we need. We just <laughs> yes. want to show him that Rob did an excellent job of hosting yeah. the show. So go go and click that like button and then uh, we can show off to Jason 
and then uh, especially with uh, with Rob's skills. So hit that like button. Thank you very much. Uh, God bless you. God bless you guys on all this. We really appreciate you. And thanks again to our Wigs members. And if you're not a Wigs member, uh, go on over to patreon.com and uh, join up. Uh, we love our Wigs. And thank you guys so much for being Wigs with us. Um, thank you guys, everybody that did a super chat tonight. Thank you, Allison, Axel. Thanks, Jason, for uh, not being here for tonight. Uh, I love you. <laughs> but uh, but I, we, we've had a lot of fun. We can't wait to have Jason back next week because he's going to, he's the, he's the man that's going to have the rants for you. So, um, you know, Know, and tell you how it is but uh, in the meantime I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the show thank you guys so much for watching stay safe out there have a great week um, and we love you we miss you have a good one bye everybody four panelists 30 minutes one week in Disney Parks news this is Park Center on Park Center the panel and I cover the top seven seven yeah seven Disney Park stories of the past week Attraction news to transportation scandals to new food and merchandise. We'll cover it all in 30 minutes or less. You can watch us stream live every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. at www.ntunes.com. Watch episodes on demand at youtube.com slash WDWNT. Or subscribe to the audio version of the show on your favorite podcast app. DreamFinders is WDW News Today's podcast all about the creative culture surrounding